Blessings, blessings, blessings to you as you are joining the After Sermon School podcast from the Bethel Baptist Church of White Plains, New York. And this is a special edition, a live show, an interview tonight. And God is just blessing us right now. Uh, we have a special guest with us from the Little Mount Zion Holy Church. Amen. Yes. joining with us. And I'm going to just take a moment and just introduce everybody and then we'll go and give you a brief description of what we're doing tonight. Yeah. So tonight we have uh, uh, evangelist Donald Stevens Sr. Yes. And then we have him with us. Uh, his wife, Deaconess Sharon Stevens. Uh, again, they're from Little Mount Zion Holy, Holy Church. And then we have evangelist Camille Holmes yeah. and, and her husband, uh, brother William Holmes, who has some things he's looking forward to as God <laughs> is calling him and, and summoning him. And so we look forward to great things from you mm -hmm. as you are stepping out and stepping forward in faith as well. And of course, we have uh, Reverend Deb Williamson here with us. Yeah. And, and uh, from Bethel Baptist Church. Of course, you know that's the First Lady of Bethel. And I'm Reverend Dr. Edward O. Williamson, pastor of Bethel Baptist Church. So yeah, we, we just are so glad that you're taking time to uh, join with us for this special edition. And tonight we are uh, just going to discuss the uh, book by C.C. Winans, Believe for It, Passing on Our Faith to the Next Generation. Believe for It. Passing on faith to the next generation. And, and it's just a, a timely resource that I believe if you would just read it and, and have some discussions about it and, and explore some of the questions that are uh, unearthed in her chapters, I believe that you would be blessed. And I would believe you would be motivated and inspired to uh, pass on the generation uh, pass on your faith to the next generation to to teach your children or, or your grandchildren or or uh, just to be, do the work of an evangelist really, mm -hmm. which is sharing our faith with whomever, mm -hmm. whosoever will is out there. Uh, and so we we are just going to uh, have a relaxed conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, in her chat in her book, she has several chapters, and I'm going to let Reverend Deb do some of it with us. But I know we're going to highlight. Uh, three of the chapters, okay? And we don't expect you all to cover all of those, but we're going to highlight three of them. And the three uh, chapters we're going to just highlight, one is called Church is Necessary. Mm -hmm. Church is Necessary. Yeah. Church is and necessary. then the second one follows your book where you, mm -hmm. you talk about do the work. Yes. It's uh, put in the work. Yes. Put in the work. And the third uh, we'll uh, do is you've already got it. Mm -hmm. already got. So those are three chapters that we're going to try and lift in these few moments that we are together. And we thank our technician, Brother Jamal Mosley. Thank God for him, our media technician, producer. Uh, 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 he's a blessing from the Lord. Amen. Uh, so, so just think about, just think about when I, and I'll share with you all, when I read the book uh, in its total, um, it really made me think about growing up in church, growing yes. up in church, yeah. and that church was not optional mm -hmm. for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, uh, I say growing up in church, but matter of fact, it was really bigger than church because it was about faith. Mm -hmm. uh, it was establishing faith in my life, but my faith was established by my connection mm -hmm. with the church. And uh, my grandfather was a deacon. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother attended church and was very active part of the seniors ministry uh, mm -hmm. in my years. Uh, uh, but she did things like usher and other things before then. My mother was a clerk in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a youth director, youth leader, missionary president, uh, all of the above, check, check, check. Mm -hmm. So basically I was almost born mm -hmm. in church yeah, and, and in the generation when I was coming up, uh, you basically, Sunday was your, uh, church was your activity, okay. mm -hmm. uh, Sunday school in the morning, uh, service, uh, then uh, afternoon service, uh, BTU or BYPU, amen, some type of training in the afternoon, and then possibly uh, an evening service or an evening concert. So, so it filled your time and it was what you did. It was where you had fellowship, uh, where you socialized, where you uh, learn, but, but in, in all of that, they were passing on the faith yes. and all of that they were teaching people to love one another and, and all of that they were building community. So it was just a, an exciting thing for me uh, uh, to have that. And, and it instilled in me the desire 
to pass on the faith uh, to other people as well. So so uh, I'm going to just give you whoever wants to jump in or Reverend Deb, you can jump in and just let's just share some thoughts, amen, on the importance of our faith or our connection with church. Uh, and and Reverend Deb has read the book and, and shared it. So why don't you start it off, Reverend Deb? Um, um, just uh, good evening to everybody. We're so happy to have this family. Mm -hmm. I have admired this family from afar. Mm -hmm and fell in love with the daughter, consequently the son here and the <laughs> children and, and all of her family. But um, and when we ended last, uh, the last podcast, we talked about how uh, your mom and dad modeled for you guys. And this is such a great segue. Yeah. Uh, but when I was coming up, I was kind of uh, in, the, in the mode, and I think it's important to say this, um, my parents knew God, mm -hmm. but they weren't at. Okay. And um, I love uh, her song, uh, Susie Winans, All of My Life. Yes. Mm -hmm. He has been faithful. Yes. Because God actually used me mm -hmm. to draw my mother, my father, my grandmother, mm -hmm. my uncles and aunts, people I didn't even know who were watching me as a teenager. Mm -hmm to the Lord. Wow. And so and so Cece mentioned her mom and dad mm -hmm. were unsaved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they made up in their mind they were gonna have a whole <laughs> uh, a saved household. Mm -hmm. right. So if you're not saved and watching this or will be listening to this, there's always time. Yeah. There's always time to get involved with the Lord and rear your family. No matter what your past was, the enemy will try to tell you you don't deserve it. You, you know who you think you are, but God will meet you right where you are. Yes. Adults, we can't make it a drudgery. Oh, I, I got to go to church one more time. But, but make it attractive. And she was in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 15, about that, how we are to all believers mm -hmm. should be making the life attractive, mm -hmm. that it attracts the unbeliever and draws them to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Matthew 5 and 13 through 16, mm -hmm. uh, when it talks about being salt of the earth and the light of the world, mm -hmm. and it says, when you do your good works, mm -hmm. amen, that, that the world will see you doing your good works, yes. and then it will bring glory to the Father. So, so that's some of the ways that we plant our seed mm -hmm. through teaching the word, through prayer, through making it attractive. There's more to it than that, but I don't want to steal everything. <laughs> I know Reverend Deb has done a deep dive in it. So come on, Reverend Deb, look like you're ready. <laughs> Uh, we talked about praying with them and praying for them, but she also talked about praying over them. Yes. yes. Mom, could you speak to them? I'm still praying over them. I, I love the part where she says, Our prayers are powerful and effective because we remain in righteous standing with God. Mm -hmm. And that is powerful. And, you know, the days when as as you know growing up with the children young and and stuff like that. sometimes you know we don't find time to just like take time out like now you know we take time out and say okay it's time when the children were when they were younger you're just working 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 but you're praying at the same time and my thing that I love to do was I used to go in the children's in the kids room mm -hmm. and I would get my oil mm -hmm. and I would anoint the bed anoint the, 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 the you know they dress a drawer I anoint their clothes mm -hmm. I anoint their shoes mm -hmm. and I anoint everything that they put on their bodies mm -hmm. and and that's how I used to pray I used to enjoy washing and ironing their clothes mm -hmm. because while I'm doing that mm -hmm. I am praying mm -hmm. over them I'm praying over the clothes that they wear and, and I to draw it was a lot it was you know raising them but Prior works. Yeah. I'm telling you, and I always say to them, you know, don't make me have to talk to God about you, yeah. you know, and, and stuff like that. And whatever time yeah. things will happen, I know that I can always go to God about my children. And and I always say, now I use the word God, I trust you mm -hmm. with my children. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and I find myself saying that even more often, even now that they're, you know, people say, Little, little, ch young children, young problem. Big, older children, oh. older problems. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But I thank God, and I thank God for my children. Mm -hmm. And I, and I can say that 
you know, we we didn't have like people, oh, perfect. No, we didn't have perfect children. Mm-hmm. But I thank God that they they were obedient mm-hmm. in, in most of the times. So, <laughs> but I thank God that they had a listening ears. And I thank God that they allow us to be their parents. Mm-hmm. But the prior works, mm-hmm. those of you that are raising young children, mm-hmm. prior prior work. keep praying over me, keep praying over your children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this book is awesome. And this session itself is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keep praying for your children. And that's what I do. That's my go-to. Why, why you, you know, have three more wonderful children. Wonderful. I, I, William. Oh, your biological. Oh, biological. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, Donald Jr., and uh, Christine, mm-hmm. Wilby, and Alexandra Steve. Amen. And wonderful in law, William Holmes. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. And um, Asinia Stevens and Devane Wilby. Yes. And I thank God for my family mm-hmm. um, because we all can come together and have church yeah. by ourselves. That's another thing. She talks yes. about coming yes. around the piano. Yes. I'm getting excited. Yes. <laughs> Piano and the children used to do. We used to have family nights, mm-hmm. and they will come up with time, and they would find their own scriptures and read, mm-hmm. and then they will sing, and then that's we can do that even on Sundays when yes. we come together. Yes. yes, we can come around the piano, we can sing, mm-hmm. we can pray, and and that's something that we still do. You know, we get the time, we can still do that. But praying is amazing. Mm-hmm. Pray for your children. I know they yeah. close. Yes. <laughs> say this and and I know uh, in the culture we live in yes we're always um trying to teach our children because here's the big thing yeah oh they gotta get a scholarship mm-hmm. you know, and I'm not against yes uh sports and dancing yes. Yes. but you have to let them know that God is first yes yes uh, absolutely. other cultures mm-hmm. Don't even recognize somebody else has got today. Right. right. So, so if we're going to invest in our children, which we should, yes. then we should invest in, in their souls. Yes. Yeah. Because if they become uh who was the guy that just got, got hit with the Jets? Uh uh quarterback. Oh, uh, Rogers. And, yeah. and, yeah. and Rogers and don't know God. Those people sometimes get all of that money, all of the fame and fortune, mm-hmm. and they are lost. Yes. They are lost. But if we teach them about God, whether they have a million dollars or a dollar, yeah. they will know who they are in the role. They are absolutely. And the suicide, the mental illnesses out there, mm-hmm. God will protect them from all of them. Yes. I could just hear you praying and you put the oil on them and hear you pray, God. Save my children. God protect yes. them. God, yes. Don't let any harm come to them. God help them in school. Yes. Yes. God wants to know all of that. All of that. He yes. already knows, but yes. He wants us to. Come. Yes. 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 So we still we still pray for them, but I I I'm, I'm enjoying my grandkids a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> And last year, school year, I had the opportunity of taking two of my grandsons to school. And and then the car, we talk about current events. It's like probably a few seconds drive. Yeah. But I have them talk. I have them pray mm-hmm. before we get to school. Going, Whose turn is it to pray today? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. One prayed yesterday. The other one prayed yeah. today. Yeah. And we, then we go on into schools. And I'm um, always stick with them, make sure it doesn't matter what you're eating, make sure you pray for it because mm-hmm. that will teach them to be grateful. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. not just it's come out of daddy's pocket, it came from God. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that, it, it just didn't come off the stove, it mm-hmm. came from God. And um, We have the fortune and the blessings to have the family over most Sundays. Mm-hmm. And um, I like to stop everything and have everybody pray and develop that mm-hmm. culture of them praying and, and hearing pray and Again, that the food that we get comes from God, mm-hmm. and, and that feeling that will emanate when we pray. You know, I think it's very important for them mm-hmm. to hear that, mm-hmm. and that's kind of lost in a lot of places. But I still want to keep it going. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. Amen. Uh, and she calls that uh, providing for their spiritual growth. Yes, that yes. 
one, you have the environment. And she she used an example in there because she gives some examples. And that's why I want to recommend to people that they do go through the book. Yes. Uh, she talks about mealtime. She yep. uses mealtime. Yes, and then yes. from the mealtime, yes. it springs out. Yes. And she talks about how we got to get the resources, yes. sometimes exposing uh, the music that that, that that we provide for them. Yes. Now, they might get something else, but we <laughs> provide you know, some music. And, and she talks about how the music help their family and yes. help them learn about God, the singing about God. Mm -hmm. uh, she talked about helping them find their place. Yes. You know, we really have um, in this generation, this is just uh, an observation that we've stepped back instead of helping youth and children to find themselves, mm -hmm. we're telling them to find themselves mm -hmm. on their own. Mm -hmm. And they really need us, yeah. The, yeah. the adults, to come alongside them and, and to help show them the way, to help them uh, get a sense of discernment. Yeah. You know, sometimes they don't know right from wrong, but we need to share that uh, with them. And so, so uh, help them provide, help them find their way, helping them, uh, somebody said something about serving. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, helping them to serve in the mm -hmm. church. Tell them it's all right to yeah. serve yeah. in the church. We were just having a conversation earlier today about uh, helping our young people find places uh, mm -hmm. so that on Sunday morning they they're not bored, but yeah. they're, that they're engaged. Uh, right. Whether it's with the uh, audio visual ministry, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, reenacting uh, the uh, junior ushers or something like mm -hmm. that, so that they can feel like they contribute mm -hmm. uh, to the worship experience and 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 it it helps draw them mm -hmm. because they're necessary mm -hmm. you, you know but uh if they're just coming sitting watching everybody else mm -hmm. you know there there's something lost in that so so we just climb through there and and work through there uh uh what, what you mean you, you got something on your mind yeah. sure <laughs> oh. i actually wanted to have something happen. Sure. that's okay mm -hmm. because we are you know millennial parents mm -hmm. <laughs> and there is a pressure to kind of lose that sense of um, mm -hmm servanthood and making sure that we're instilling because in some you know circles that it might sound very antiquated mm -hmm. that millennial parents are still mm -hmm. bringing their kids to church and things like that so although we don't are not raising our kids the same way my parents raised us mm -hmm. there's still a way to honor god in your home mm -hmm. in this culture yes. mm -hmm. and i would say some easy some simple ways our pastor was just talking about kids serving um whereas a while ago we were told what to do in church you know you're gonna do this you're gonna sing on this choir yes. you're gonna do this. <laughs> we make sure that our children we say listen what what would you like to do we give them a choice but they're gonna choose from one of the two things okay. you know, yes. it's not necessarily you're gonna do this it's like would you like to sing on the choir mm -hmm. or would you like to serve as an usher mm -hmm. you know you have to choose from something mm -hmm. um not the usher one no i think it's it's just natural for them because it is they, natural for them because they come from a musically inclined family. Oh, so okay. they do tend to go to music, yeah. but uh, but the point is that we're not we don't force them to, yeah. but we do give them the choice within a parameter. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not just you can go to church or not. And I like that you brought up sports because yeah. you know we have all boys <laughs> and growing up. My parents said right away, don't choose no sport. <laughs> we played on Sunday. And so I would say that, you know, when you marry, when you when you're married, you can't necessarily always do everything your parents do because you're your partner here. But I remember growing up and saying, okay, you were never allowed to do that. And so when our boys chose football, you know, you already know automatically it would be a Sunday. Mm -hmm. But one thing that we did within our household that might not look the same as when I grew up is. We talked to the coach. We said, listen, there's going to be some games that he will be there. And there's going to be some Sundays he will not be there. Because Sunday is a day that we honor the Lord. So we would let, we, they would look at the schedule and they say, okay, this is a team I want to play. Okay, you're going to miss this Sunday, this Sunday, because you're going to be in church. You won't play. So the coaches know from the beginning that our sons will not be there every Sunday because Sunday is a day that we honor. We have allowed them to play, but then after they finish that game, they come right to church with their with their gear. So it's not a day where they, you know, it's not a day where they the whole day is shot. Yeah, they right. come in and they hear the sermon and they get to be with the people after church. So um, I would say that that's a little different from how we grew up, but it also still incorporates, and they know that Sunday is a day of worship. Yeah, I'm going to just spoke to the times because mm -hmm. I definitely. Uh, they not all change and they have that shit. Mm -hmm. And so not trying to be judgmental to parents now, mm -hmm. but you have to be willing to invest 
spiritually if it's your children. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you're their worst enemy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people don't like the word discipline. She mentioned this first chapter. Um, when it when it talks in Proverbs about yeah. sparing the rock. Yes. 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 Uh, <laughs> people have different opinions about how that goes. My mom and daddy did not mm -hmm. have a different opinion. But um if if you do not discipline your child, yeah. the word says you don't love them. Yes, right. But right. it'll be like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> There's a way to do it. Absolutely. So if you don't believe in corporal punishment, okay. <laughs> but your child needs to know there are boundaries. Yes. There are consequences that right is right. And they need to see you as an adult modeling. Mm -hmm. spoken that, modeling what God says. Yes. Because, you know, we can't say to them, do what I say, not mm -hmm. what I do. Kids are very astute. They come here smart. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so they're going to look to see what, if you're doing what you yeah. Am I right, Mom? Okay. Yeah. 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 And so it's very important. And we're not perfect. So we need to be able to be humble in front of them and say, I'm sorry. Or Mommy was just a little upset. Mommy, mommy needs to get some rest. Mm -hmm. I apologize. The yes. vulnerableness will draw yes. them to you. Absolutely. Yeah. With that girl, we always listen, pastor and wife. Mm -hmm. We have things that we have to work on too. Yes. So being PKs, yes. the light on them all the time. Absolutely. We have to talk to them about you can still be a person. Yes. You, you can still, you know, it's balanced. You, right. You can't do everything and throw somebody on the house do it. Right. But, yes. but we're going to be like she said, fair. Mm -hmm. But we do have our balance. Yeah. Yes. Very similar. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask everybody to get your most powerful statement together. You know, okay. Get your most powerful statement that you want to share together in your mind that you would like someone to take away mm -hmm. from this podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, the most powerful statement. Mm -hmm. uh, she, in her book, she always has some questions at the end of yeah. the chapters. Yeah. And uh, one of the questions she asked was, uh, what do you already possess mm -hmm. that God could use to spread his name and fame to the next generation? Mm -hmm. what, what's, what's already in you? What do you already possess that you can share and pass on uh, to, the, to the next generation uh, that God's name would be glorified and that they would uh, take hold of this faith that we have? And then uh, the second question she asked that I, I just picked two of them out of the book, she said, how can you use your story and gifts to manifest his presence in the lives of, of others and fill them with the reality of his love? How can you use your story? How can you tell your story? That, that all it is is evangelism. <laughs> okay. How can you tell your story so that it will impact? others and and we say to you that are watching this podcast we're not just talking to be talking we're trying to inspire yes. and encourage people Amen. uh to pour into our children to pour into our youth uh she opened the book talking about it uh remember the phrase it takes a village yes. it takes a village uh, to raise a child and we used to say that all the time well it takes a community it mm -hmm. takes the church family it takes uh families working together yes. and mm -hmm. having the same values and things like that and pouring into our kids. Our kids need us today. And it's an adult challenge that are that that really we are the we are the caretakers. We are the stewards. God, God loans us our children. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really his. Yes. And and we sure. need to be careful how we treat that that God has entrusted to us. So it's been a blessing trying to share with you all. <laughs> and 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 they are giving these powerful statements we have a couple of people we have a couple of people on there if you'd like to ask a question or make a point or uh raise an issue just put it in the chat box mm -hmm. so that we could respond to it uh, if you're just taking it in we thank god for your presence uh we're going to post this and and it's going to be out there and uh if you're looking at it share it with somebody else share it with some uh mother or some young father or some mm -hmm. grandparent or some aunt some uncle that that's feeling their wits in with their children and can't do anything with them. We can do. We can take them to the Lord and we can 
pray for them and, and we can live a holy and righteous life before them. And then we can try to lead them, train them up in the way that they should go. When they're old, they will not be far from it. Uh, so, so each of you come with your most powerful statement. Then I'm going to close and close with a scripture and, and for you. Yes. Uh, you want to go? Yeah. Um, everything happens for a reason. Okay. Be open and honest with your kids and people around you. Um, our experience doesn't matter. What you've been through is, like I said, for a reason. So try, don't do like if you're not, if you're going to be pulling your face around the kids, they're going to see straight through it. You know, it's like, listen, I struggled with that when I was younger. This is how I overcame it. And this is how we're going to get through it. Obviously, we're going to put God at the center, keep God at the center. But just be open, be honest with your kids, and keep God at the center. Amen. Okay. All right. Amen. I would say, um, especially as millennial parents, that you don't have to succumb to how the world tells us to raise our children. Mm -hmm. Don't feel the pressure um, from the world to go with every trend and go with every new <laughs> wave of doctrine, um, but to be firm on the word of God and to be firm on um, your relationship with God. And then there are a lot of resources. Uh, this new thing is called gentle parenting, but I tend to move towards spirit-led parenting. Amen. So mm -hmm. um, spirit-led parenting is going to the Holy Spirit, asking yes. him for guidance. Um, so my powerful statement would be, um, don't feel pressured by the world's um, standards, but make sure that you are being firm on the word of God and, and stick to what the word says. I I um I, I have kind of a story because I, I worked a lot even though, you know, I did a whole bunch of different things at the same time, it was, was just when I was young, I had a lot more energy, did a lot <laughs> yes, of different sir. things. Um, and um, I know you didn't ask me for a story, but, but go ahead. <laughs> I, I I missed out a lot of, I mean, I've been to different, I mean, I've been in their lives and around and doing a lot of things with my kids. They see me, yes. but I felt that I wasn't there a lot. Mm -hmm. And at one point I was talking to my son and I was kind of apologizing to him for not being there. And he says, Dad, Dad, he says, Dad, I watched you. Ah, wow. I watched you. And I'm like, wow. He shut me up wow. right there because my thing with that uh, is, is Pastor uh, quoted it before Matthew um, 5, where it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And so that speaks of consistency. It speaks of being real, um, real in God. And um, thank God that my kids caught it. One quick story of my daughter, one of my daughter, I don't know if I should say this. She <laughs> wanted to marry a man, but that that particular man has to spend at least six months with me. That kind of shut me up too. I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, something is happening that's good. And I just want to keep doing it just to glorify God. And that's that's our whole life. Well, mine will be, you know, to be consistent um, in um, praying. I, I am so big on that. Um, and consistent, just keep praying um, for your children um, because it works. And whenever time I getting ready to retire next Friday. Ooh, wow. one, of the, one of the things, and I said to my kids, I remember when Camille got her first job as a speech pathologist, yes. and she saw my paycheck, and she said, Mommy, I'm going to make it more than you. I said, that is outstanding. I said, that is outstanding. That is wonderful. I said, it's okay. I said, so I am leaving my job because I I like I loved what I what I did working in the special ed department, but I kept that job because it gave me time with the children. Mm -hmm. I got to put them on the bus, mm -hmm. and I was there when they came home. Mm -hmm. So that was yes, very yes. important to me and Donald. Yes. And he said, you know, one parent always has to be mm -hmm. be there, mm -hmm. you know, and that was something time. Mm -hmm. You can't, That's you can't never get it back. So being putting them on the on the bus, you see what their face look like when they get off the bus. Mm -hmm. You see what their face look like, mm -hmm. and it's time for you to move in because if they come off and they're looking sad, 
you okay here i am yeah. what happened how was your day and i love that yeah. but time with your children and always pray at all times mm -hmm. don't say you know and i always make them know i always let them know that i'm gonna go to god Mm -hmm. Just let me know what it is that you want. Because I believe and trust God that, 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 much, that much that whatever I ask him Come on now. concerning my yes. children, yes. That he's going to do it. Yes. He does it every time. Yes. Because he's God. Yes. He's God. So those of you that are still raising your children and raising your grandchildren, trust God trust for God. your children. Trust God for your grandchildren. Yes. Don't give up on your children. Don't yes. give up. Don't say, oh, they're this and they're that. Don't call them back. I don't believe in calling any kids back. Yes. 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 I don't believe it. Don't use those words in front of you. Don't end it. Mm -hmm. So, but keep praying and keep trusting God mm -hmm. for your children. All you don't talk. Come on now. <laughs> 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 um, so we the way Sunday. Um, the Lord just planted this book. We were going to do it earlier. Yes. Yes. And put back. And yes. when we put it back, the Lord gave it to him in wow. some of the wow. Wow. that it's manifesting itself uh, even, even greater now. Um, I preach Sunday, what's in your house? Mm -hmm. Because the widow who had lost her husband yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and had two sons that were going to be slain because they were still in debt, went to the man of God and said, I need to help. Yes. And and he said, Well, what, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. He said, Well, what do you have? Before she could answer, he said, What do you have in your house? She said, Nothing <laughs> but, but yes. a little jar of mm -hmm. My statement is use what the Lord has given yes. you. Because he he assigned her to to participate with her boys. Mm -hmm. I said this Sunday, we let our kids get away and we don't have them helping in what the Lord is doing. Yes. They got to see the miracle with her. Yes. She passed on her faith because they were involved. Yes. Yes. Sleeping your kids in bed and stuff. Yes. Everybody go. Yes. Invest in your kids. Yes. Spirit, their soul. Yes. It's yes. the most important thing we can do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I obviously knew that. Raise my kids on that, but seeing my grandkids, there's a there's something else burning yes, now, y'all. Yes, yes. In the yes. world that we live in, yes. They absolutely. got to know Jesus. Got to know Jesus. But this world, <laughs> it, it, I don't know. he's he's gonna come back and get it, but it, it's not gonna take them anywhere that they are going to be satisfied. Right, right. And there's gonna be a God sized hole in all of us. We have anybody that has not accepted it. And well, the sooner they can get it, yes. the better off their life will be, and God can use them. Amen. Thanks, God. Thanks, God. Uh, see, don't take don't take a whole crowd <laughs> to get excited about the Lord. Um, and what I've been pushing through it all the, when I caught this was the word believe. Yes. And and if you she she says believe for it, what whatever yes. it is, believe. Yes. For it, and and that's that's really a faith statement. And so, so what I would say to you, whoever you are out there, whatever you're going through, believe for it. Believe God. Believe God will do it. Believe God will open a door. Believe God will make a way. You know, I mean, if you have faith, the Bible says the size of a mustard seed. Yes. Yeah. Amen. You can speak to mountains, mm -hmm. and mountains will get out of your. But you got to believe. It. Yes. You got to believe it. You got to have confidence and know. That as they used to say, the Lord will yes. make a way somehow. Somehow. Listen, I thank all of you. Thank all of you. Yes. And, and we're going to get this out. We're going to publicize it and share it yes. with people. We praise God. Got some heart symbols coming up. And somebody saying they love, they love today. Amen. I want to share with you what her pastor scripture, what's so important that she said, uh, Psalm number 78. Psalm number 78, uh, beginning at verse 2, she says, uh, and the word says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, 
and our for and our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children telling the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children mm -hmm. that the generation to come mm -hmm. might know them the children who, who would be born, that they may arise and declare them mm -hmm. to their children, yes. that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Yes. And that's, that's what it's about. Amen. Yes. That our kids yes. can learn about God yes. and set their hope in God mm -hmm. and trust God for everything. Amen. 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 You all are so wonderful. Thank Praise you. God. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Thank Brother Jamal. Amen. We thank those that have joined us. Amen. Somebody just joined us, even as we're coming coming around the bend. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Amen. For our concerns. Amen. Uh, we're going to go to the Lord. Amen. This, uh, just uh, as we follow this, the book is called Believe for It, Passing on uh, passing on Our Faith mm -hmm. to the Next Generation. Amen. Believe for It, mm -hmm. Passing on Our Faith to the Next Generation mm -hmm. by C.C. Winans. Amen. It's a very, uh, okay. very timely. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, again, this this is recorded, amen, and so we're going to run it and just visit our website, our podcast uh, platforms, amen, and, and share it with a friend. You may have some people, some families that are going through and they need some hope. Share this with them, amen. Let us pray. Uh, dear God, we just thank you to, tonight, Lord God. Oh, we thank you for what was shared tonight, Lord God, for your, for your blessing us to have families, first of all, Lord God blessing us with children, blessing us with, with youth, Lord God, blessing us, uh, not only just our biological children, but the, the children of the church, the children of the community, yes, the children of the neighborhood, Lord God, the children of the earth, Lord God. Uh, we thank you for our children and, and our children, Lord God, are the future, Lord God. And so we want to pour into them. We want to we want to show them the way. We want to teach them about you, Lord God, yes. so that they can come to, to learn about you and to, to trust you, Lord Lord God, and to have their own faith in you, Lord God, uh, so that their souls will be anchored, Lord God, so that they will have wisdom and discernment for life, Lord God, so that they will learn how to walk in your ways, Lord God, because there's favor and blessing in walking in your ways, Lord God. And we just praise you, Lord God, for, for authors like C.C. Winers, Lord God, and how, how you lead them, Lord God, to open up their hearts and pour them out uh, to bless others, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for common experiences, Lord God, common experiences of, of grace, Lord God, common experiences of faith development, Lord God. And Lord, help us to pass the faith on to the next generation, Lord God. Help us to pass it on, Lord God. They need you, Lord God. They need the Christ in their lives, Lord God. They need hope, Lord God. They need peace, Lord God. They need they need joy, Lord God. They, they need to find fulfillment and contentment, Lord God. They need to learn how to trust in you, Lord God. They, they need all these things, Lord God, because, because the world is leading them astray, Lord God. Oh, Lord, and, and their lives are, are turning into nothing, Lord God. There's so much uh, anguish and so much strife and so much mental health illnesses, Lord God, and so many challenges, Lord God. Oh, Lord, build a fence around our children, Lord God. Yes, Cover Lord. them, Lord God. Cover yes. them, Lord, uh, Lord God, and, and protect them, Lord God. Oh, Lord, we need you in this world today, Lord God, with all this going on and all this going through. Not only the children, Lord God, but parents need you. Mothers and fathers need you, Lord God. Siblings need you. Brothers and sisters need you, Lord God. Aunts need you. Uncles need you, Lord God. Grandparents need you, Lord God. Oh, Lord, neighbors need you, Lord God. Uh, members of the church, Lord God, need you, Lord God. Oh, Lord, use us all 
to be a blessing to one another, Lord God. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord God. And Lord, as we close this, this podcast out, we're going to believe for it. Yes. We're going to believe for it. And we're going to trust you, Lord God. We're going to trust you, Lord God. Because your word says, we trust in you with all our heart. And lead not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you. Your word says, you will direct our paths. So we thank you, Lord God. Bless those that will be a part of this podcast moving forward, Lord God. And Lord, may they find light in you and your word and hope in Jesus Christ. We give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.